The Rape of Nanking, the Japanese Genocide of the Chinese People. The Rape of Nanking took place in December 1937, over the span of six weeks. It is estimated that in six weeks, anywhere between 200,000 to 300,000 men, women, and children were slaughtered by the Japanese army. It is also estimated that about 20,000 women and young girls were raped. Many look at a genocide like this and wonder what led to such a genocide. When one takes a look at the evidence gathered about this event, you see a few factors such as Japanese nationalism, the hard defense of the Chinese army, and the quick surrender of the Chinese to the Japanese. The invasion of Japan into China started as an imperialistic expansion attempt. The Japanese were looking to increase their influence in global issues politically and militarily. Also, just like Western imperialism, the Japanese were looking to secure more raw materials, food, and labor. The invasion started in 1931 with the Japanese invading Manchuria and creating a colony. This led to rising tensions between the Japanese and the Chinese. In July 1937, this tension came to a head in an incident on the Marco Polo Bridge. This incident was the spark that started the Second Sino-Japanese War. The Battle of Shanghai is considered one of the first battles in the Sino-Japanese War. At the start of the battle, the Japanese boasted on how they were going to overcome the Chinese resistance in Shanghai in three days and win the overall war in three months. To the Japanese frustration, the Battle of Shanghai took three months and occurred in three different phases. The results of this battle were heavy losses of men, artillery, and armor to the Chinese. The Japanese started their march to Nanking on November 11, 1937, with 50,000 soldiers. They split their forces up to approach the city from different directions. Throughout the march, the Chinese and Japanese engaged with each other on multiple occasions. While marching, the Japanese soldiers burned or destroyed an estimated 20 to 30 million U.S. dollars in property. They also engaged in looting and rape along the march. The Japanese reached Nanking on December 9, 1937, where they battled with the Chinese for four days. The Chinese troops were poorly led and very disorganized. On December 13, 1937, the Japanese entered the city with orders to kill all the Chinese soldiers. When they surrendered, the Chinese troops numbered around 90,000. After the surrender, for six weeks, unspeakable horrors occurred within the city. 20,000 women and young girls were raped and many were killed afterwards. There was citywide burnings and destruction of property. The Chinese were forced to dig their own mass graves and when they were finished digging, they were machine gunned down into the graves. A few officers even held killing contests to see who could kill more Chinese. Soldiers would also randomly fire into crowds of people killing hundreds. One fact that could have led to the genocide is the radical nationalism Japan had at this time. In the 1920s, right-wing conservative beliefs began to take hold within the government and military, becoming a driving force. Because of these radical right-wing beliefs, the Japanese became more of a fascist state. Around the same time, they began to indoctrinate children within the education system. They were teaching conformity and obedience to the emperor and that they should always be loyal to their nation and whatever the nation was doing was for the betterment of the nation. Another factor that should be considered is that the Chinese fought back more than the Japanese were expecting. When the war started, Japan believed they could invade and defeat the Chinese within three months. It took the Japanese three months to take Shanghai. This left the Japanese feeling frustrated, angry, and tired. Also, battling for Shanghai caused for more Japanese casualties than they anticipated, which also fed into the feeling of frustration and anger.
The last factor that should be looked at is the way the Japanese felt about surrender as a culture. To do that, you need to look at how the samurai way, or Bushido, affected Japanese culture. In the 20th century, Bushido was used within the military as a way to present war as purifying to the person and the nation. Also, that death in war was an honorable duty. They viewed surrender as an act of cowardice and was most unacceptable. These concepts were taught to the Japanese from childhood and onwards. Within the military, soldiers were taught that an officer's commands were the emperor's commands and should be followed without fail. When the Chinese surrendered, this was against the samurai way or Bushido. By following Bushido, the Japanese felt that surrender was dishonorable and unacceptable. This deserved the worst sort of punishments. The quick surrender of the 90,000 soldiers left in Nanking was viewed with contempt by the Japanese and could have also added to the frustrations left behind from the Battle of Shanghai. The rape of Nanking is considered one of the worst war crimes and genocides to have ever occurred in human history. At the end of World War II, the Tokyo War Crimes Trial was held and General Matsui Iwane and his Lieutenant Tani Hisao were tried, convicted, and executed for the war crimes committed in Nanking. To this day, the memories of the genocide color and cause raised tensions within the Chinese and Japanese relationships.